Learn how to customize your ribbon with Cricut. Welcome back to Bride Society. Today we are showing you how to customize ribbon for your wedding or of course any other event um, using your Cricut. So this is a beginner tutorial but obviously it's suitable for anybody and we think it's a great idea for like your wedding thank you gifts or to be tied around your bouquet something like that just to add that extra little personal touch to your day. Obviously I've gone for this text but you can go with your married name um, it's something more personal like that. Loads of options with your Cricut. So here's what you'll need. The first thing you're going to want to do is open a blank canvas inside Design Space. So Obviously here I've got some things on my screen, but you will want a blank screen. So you will come up here to the top left where it says new and you'll get a blank screen. So once you've got that, here is kind of one I did, well, three I did earlier um, as examples for you. And I'm gonna show you how to recreate one of these. If this isn't the step that you need, there are timestamps in the description box below so you can just go and jump ahead to the step that you need if that's like application, the cutting stage, whatever. Okay, so to create your text, you're gonna come over to the left-hand pane, hit text. This will create a text box for you. You simply type in whatever you want, whether that be your new married name, um, congratulations, thank you, some song lyrics. We're gonna go with the song lyric that we have here and then obviously my bit that I've added on the end. So we'll go. Okay, once you've got that typed in, um, as you can see, that's gotten really big. So we need to size down. You'll notice I'm zoomed in quite a lot at the moment. I'm at 150% just to make it easier for you to see what I'm actually doing over here. Because your ribbon's gonna be quite small, your text is gonna be quite small. So I've just done that for ease and visualization. So we're gonna make this text smaller. As you can see, it's quite big right now. It's over 22 inches. So you can do this a number of ways. You can just grab here and resize. Obviously measure the dimensions of your ribbon and how big you want that to be. So I'm gonna match what I've got here. So I'm going for about 0.62 inches high because of the depth of like the height of my ribbon. I'm going to do that by coming up to the top here where it says size. I'm going to click where it says height and type in there. Okay, at least that's on the screen now. So till you get too fussy with the sizing, you're going to make sure you pick the font that you want because that will change the size of your text box. So let's start there. Come up to where it says font on the top left hit the drop down. Um, now, depending whether you pay for Cricut Design Space or not, you will have access to different things. So I don't, so I'm just gonna select and filter by what's on my system. The font I've been using here is called Brittany, so I'm gonna type that in, but obviously you can just scroll through and try different things. Okay, you can see that's updated there. So as you can see, it's adjusted the size of my box again. So we're just going to go back and repeat that earlier step. Okay. So you can now leave it like this. As you can see, mine is much longer. So what I've done is I've come up here and chosen the unlock the padlock button and changed it to 6.52. So you unlock. 6.52 enter relock the padlock that will now hold those ratios you can obviously fiddle with this as much as you like if that's too wide for you you can readjust resize by just dragging like so the last really important step that you need to know before you cut this is something that you can't actually see right now but maybe if i make it much bigger let's see maybe if I change the color you'll see it ah okay 
You can change the colour, by the way, if you want, um, if you're cutting out of a certain coloured vinyl, if that's helpful to you, especially if you're doing lots of different ones and different vinyls, that will help sort it onto the mat later on. Um, but that's just a side tip. Okay, so the important thing here, as you'll see, where each letter is joining the next, there's still a line as if they were separate letters, even though it's joined up. Can you see just there between each letter? So the problem is, if you just cut now, it will still cut them as individual letters and you'll have cuts through every single letter. Obviously, when it's joined up, you don't want that. So what you're going to do is highlight that text box, come down here to the bottom right hand side where it says combine and then select unite. OK, and can you see what happened there? It's now joined those letters together. You see just here, here. So now it will be a continuous cut and be much smoother. Okay, and I'm just gonna reduce this back down and get ready for the cut. So once you're happy with your design, you've spell checked it, you're happy with your spacing, you can always adjust the letter spacing too if that's something you wanna do. If you do at this stage decide there's any adjustments you need to make, the great thing about the unite function is that you can come back down here to the bottom right and hit undo unite, which you can't do with the weld function you'd have to hit the undo arrow up here um, and definitely not have saved it after welding um, because then that's kind of permanent, it's done forever, whereas Unite, you can undo that. So yeah, if you need to do that, do that now, but otherwise you are ready to go. I'm just gonna hide these ones so it doesn't cut these. Okay. Then, so come up here to where it says make it in the top right hand corner. So as you can see, it has organized it onto my mat. You can click and move this around. So if you're using scraps of vinyl, whatever, and it creates a red border. So you need to sit your design within this red border just to make sure it cuts cleanly. I like to move mine down just a little bit further from, from the top. The next really important step is to come over here to the left hand side where it says mirror. We are using iron on vinyl, which means it's going to go onto your design reversed. So you need to switch that on. As you can see, it will then flip it up here and then you're ready to come down here to the bottom right hand corner and hit continue. Make sure your machine is switched on. Once you've done that, as I say, we are using iron on. So I'm going to select here, everyday iron on, because it's already stored in my favorites. If it's not here, you just hit browse on materials and you can select it from inside that list. It's then asking you to make sure you have loaded in your five point blade to clamp B. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure we've done that now and prep our materials onto the mat. So grab your standard grip mat, the vinyl of your choice, and cut your vinyl down to size, applying shiny side face down onto the mat because it needs to cut through this side of your vinyl. So we're going to load our blade into clamp B, so you just open it up, grab your blade, so it's the fine point one, so it's the one with the almost barely there point. Okay, and then we just pop it in the top here, close the clamp like so, and it just locks it into place. Grab your mat, slide it under each of the guys on either side, making sure that all four star wheels are evenly spaced out. Once you've done that, you're ready to hit the flashing arrow button. This will load it into the machine. Once it's ready to go, you'll see the C Cricut logo start to flash. You can go ahead and press that now. Once the cut is finished, the arrow button will start flashing again. Go ahead and press it and eject your mat. We now need to prepare our vinyl for transfer. So go ahead and grab your weeding tool, which looks like this. And we're gonna use that to remove all the negative space from your mat. So that means all the little bits like between the letters and things that you don't want to be transferred onto your final project. 
When you come to remove the larger piece of vinyl that's your negative space, that, again, that you don't want on your project, just go slowly because you're quite likely to occasionally pull up a letter that you don't want to pull up or notoriously the dots on like the eyes, commas, that kind of thing really easily kind of come away with the bigger piece. Um, so yeah, just proceed slowly and you can use your weeding tool to try and encourage those um, full stops etc to come out. You just have to take your time and go slow. Sometimes a great hack is that you can use some of the vinyl that you weeded out from in between the letters uh, to replace some of the sort of apostrophes and um, dots above eyes and things if it doesn't cut properly or come out properly from your vinyl. You can just sort of substitute them in if you place them down carefully. Maybe it's only me that's got the patience to sit and do that. <laughs> um, if you're feeling really um, particular about how it comes out, that's a great workaround I've found. Now you need to grab your Easy Press, um, which is what I'm using. It will also work with your Easy Press Mini. Um, I'm going to switch the machine on using this button here. Then it's going to preheat. So you want to preheat your Easy Press to 140 degrees centigrade. So to do that, if you need to adjust it from what it's already on, you press and hold the thermometer button. So mine's set to 155, so I need to reduce down, like so. That's flashing, and then it will set it to 140. And then I need to set my timer to 30 seconds. So I'm going to press this to see what it's set at. It's currently set at 17 seconds. So once that starts flashing, you can manually adjust that. So I'm going to adjust mine to 30. Then you'll see the C Cricut logo is currently in amber color because it's heating up. It'll turn green and make an audible beep when it's ready to go. Now that your Easy Press is heated up and ready to go, you need to grab your Easy Press mat, your ribbon of choice, your pre-cut and weeded final, and your heat resistant sheet. I'm actually just using a baking sheet. Um, Cricut does provide though an uh, iron-on protective sheet, but this, if you're just looking for a cheaper alternative, this is a really great hack. So go ahead and position the ribbon onto your mat and decide where you're gonna wanna put the text. Preheat for five seconds. The preheating makes it so that when you apply this, the sticky part of the backing um, becomes kind of sticky and holds it in place. So go ahead and position your vinyl. Once you're happy, cover with your protective sheet. And hit the C Cricut logo. Pushing down with firm pressure until this counts down to zero and makes a beep. Once that's cool to the touch, you can carefully peel back the carrier sheet, just making sure that everything's adhered, so take it slow. If it hasn't, you can just replace the carrier sheet down and add a little bit more time with the easy press and the protective sheet. And there you have it. I hope you found that useful. If you've got any questions, do drop them in the comments box below. Um, I do try and check those to help people out. Uh, if you want to see any more videos like this, we've got a whole Cricut playlist on our channel. I'll link that in the description box below. But otherwise, please give the video a like if you liked it and hit subscribe so you don't miss future content like this.